Reading by Bologna Times. A Prize for Edie by Jesse Franklin Bone. The committee had unquestionably made a mistake. There was no doubt that Edie had achieved the long-sought cancer cure, but awarding the Nobel Prize was nonetheless a mistake. The letter from America arrived too late. The committee had regarded acceptance as a foregone conclusion, for no one since Boris Pasternak had turned down a Nobel Prize. So when Professor Dr. Nels Christensen opened the letter, there was not the slightest fear on his part or on that of his fellow committeemen, Dr. Eric Karlstrom and Dr. Sven Eklund, that the letter would be anything other than the usual routine acceptance. At last we learn the identity of this great research worker, Christensen murmured as he scanned the closely typed sheets. Karlstrom and Eklund waited impatiently, wondering at the peculiar expression that fixed itself on Christensen's face. Fine beads of sweat appeared on the professor's high, narrow forehead as he laid the letter down. Well, he said heavily, now we know. Know what? Eklund demanded. What does it say? Does she accept? She accepts, Christensen said in a peculiar, half-strangled tone, as he passed the letter to Eklund. See for yourself. Eklund's reaction was different. His face was a mottled reddish white as he finished the letter and handed it across the table to Karlstrom. Why, he demanded of no one in particular, did this have to happen to us? It was bound to happen some time, Karlstrom said. It's just our misfortune that it happened to us. He chuckled as he passed the letter back to Christensen. At least this year the presentation should be an event worth remembering. It seems that we have a little problem, Christensen said, making what would probably be the understatement of the century. Possibly there would be greater understatements in the remaining ninety-nine years of the twenty-first century, but Karlstrom doubted it. We certainly have our necks out, he agreed. We can't do it, Eklund exploded. We simply can't award the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology to that, that, C. Edy. He sputtered into silence. We can hardly do anything else, Christensen said. There's no question as to the identity of the winner. Dr. Hansen's letter makes that unmistakably clear, and there's no question that the award is deserved. We still could award it to someone else, Eklund said. Not a chance. We've already said too much to the press. It's known all over the world that the medical award is going to the discoverer of the basic cause of cancer, to the founder of modern neoplastic therapy. Christensen grimaced. If we changed our decision now, there'd be all sorts of embarrassing questions from the press. I can see it now, Karlstrom said. The banquet, the table, the flowers, and Professor Dr. Nels Christensen in formal dress with the Order of St. Olaf gleaming across his white shirt front, standing before that distinguished audience and announcing the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology is awarded to and then that deadly hush when the audience sees the winner. You needn't rub it in, Christensen said unhappily. I can see it too. These Americans, Eklund said bitterly. He wiped his damp forehead. The picture Karlstrom had drawn was accurate but hardly appealing. One simply can't trust them, publishing a report as important as that as a laboratory release. They should have given proper credit. They did, Karlstrom said. They did, precisely. But the world, including us, was too stupid to see it. We have only ourselves to blame. If it weren't for the fact that the work was inspired and effective, Christensen muttered, we might have a chance of salvaging the situation, but through its application ninety-five percent of cancers are now curable. It is obviously the outstanding contribution to medicine in the past five decades. But we must consider the source, Eklund protested. This award will make the prize for medicine a laughing-stock. No doctor will ever accept another. 
if we go through with this we might as well forget about the medical award from now on this will be its swan song it hits too close to home too many people have been saying similar things about our profession and its trend toward specialization and to have the nobel prize confirm them would alienate every doctor in the world we simply can't do it yet who else has made a comparable discovery or one that is even half as important christensen asked that's a good question carlstrom said and a good answer to it isn't going to be easy to find for my part i can only wish that alfax laboratories had displayed an interest in literature rather than medicine then our colleagues at the academy could have had the painful decision their task would be easier than ours christensen said wearily after all the criteria of art are more flexible medicine unfortunately is based upon facts that's the hell of it carlstrom said there must be some way to solve this problem eklund said after all it was a perfectly natural mistake we never suspected that alfax was a physical rather than a biological sciences laboratory perhaps that might offer grounds i don't think so carlstrom interrupted the means in this case aren't as important as the results and we can't deny that the cancer problem is virtually solved even though men have been saying for the past two generations that the answer was probably in the literature and all that was needed was someone with the intelligence and the time to put the facts together the fact remains that it was c e d who did the job and it required quite a bit more than merely collecting facts intelligence and original thinking of a high order was involved christensen sighed someone eklund said bitterly some thing you mean c e d c e d computer extrapolating discriminatory manufactured by alfax laboratories trenton new jersey u s a c e d americans always naming things a machine wins the nobel prize it's fantastic christensen shook his head it's not fantastic unfortunately and i see no way out we can't even award the prize to the team of engineers who designed and built e d dr hansen is right when he says the discovery was e d s and not the engineers it would be like giving the prize to albert einstein's parents because they created him is there any way we can keep the presentation secret eklund asked i'm afraid not the presentations are public we've done too good a job publicizing the nobel prize as a telecast item it's almost the equal of the motion picture academy award i can imagine the reaction when our candidate is revealed in all her metallic glory a two-meter cube of steel filled with micro miniaturized circuits complete with flashing lights and cogwheels carlstrom chuckled and where are you going to hang the metal christensen shivered i wish you wouldn't give that metal nightmare a personality he said it unnerves me personally i wish that dr hansen alfax laboratories and e d were all at the bottom of the ocean in some nice deep spot like the marianas trench he shrugged of course we won't have that sort of kick so we'll have to make the best of it it just goes to show that you can't trust americans eklund said i've always thought we should keep our awards on this side of the atlantic where people are sane and civilized making a personality out of a computer ah i suppose it's their idea of a joke i doubt it christensen said they just like to name things preferably with female names it's a form of insecurity the mother fixation but that's not important i'm afraid gentlemen that we shall have to make the award as we have planned i can see no way out after all there's no reason why the machine cannot receive the prize the conditions merely state that it is to be presented to the one regardless of nationality who makes the greatest contribution to medicine or physiology i wonder how his majesty will take it carlstrom said the king i'd forgotten that eklund gasped i expect 
he'll have to take it. Christensen said he might even appreciate the humor in the situation. Gustav Adolf is a good king, but there are limits, Eklund observed. There are other considerations, Christensen replied. After all, Edie is the reason the crown prince is still alive, and Gustav is fond of his son. After all these years? Christensen smiled. Swedish royalty was long lived. It was something of a standing joke that King Gustav would probably outlast the pyramids, providing the pyramids lived in Sweden. I'm sure His Majesty will cooperate. He has a strong sense of duty, and since the real problem is his, not ours, I doubt if he will shirk it. How do you figure that? Eklund asked. We merely select the candidates according to the rules, and according to the nature of their contribution. Edie is obviously the outstanding candidate in medicine for this year. It deserves the prize. We would be compromising with principle if we did not award it fairly. I suppose you're right, Eklund said gloomily. I can't think of any reasonable excuse to deny the award. Nor I, Carlstrom said. But what did you mean by that remark about this being the king's problem? You forget. Christensen said mildly, of all of us, the king has the most difficult part. As you know, the Nobel Prize is formally presented at a state banquet. Well, His Majesty is the host, Christensen said, and just how does one eat dinner with an electronic computer? End of A Prize for Edie by Jesse Franklin Bone